Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. Tokus whips out the wand of web, and I cast web on the one carrying Aslo away. Don't worry, Aslo, we'll catch you. The web flies up and tangles its wings up, and it goes crashing into the ground. He lashes around and destroys the web entirely. He tries to take off once again. I try to attack the beast. Eight damage. Eight damage is not quite enough. I'm going to full move towards it. And then take my shot. Take it down. That's an 18 to hit, boys. That will be 8 damage. And with one last arrow, you strike it in the back and it falls to the earth. We rush to Aslo's side. Mm -hmm. I stand there cradling Aslo in my arms and say, When you wake up, I'm going to tell you how much you mean to me and how sorry I am. You find what you presume to be its lair. Having gathered up the last of the treasures, you once again resume your journey towards the Green Spire. All right. This has been really nice being carried and all, but are we finally in a spot where it's safe to let me down? No, Tokus. No, don't eat you. Don't you even worry yourself over it. I got you. <laughs> like Tokus is just at this point, I've turned to- uh, Shaba's arms into like a works table, and I've been like <laughs> tinkering along the way. <laughs> are, do I have any uh, uh, items I could have remade? Let's see. Realistically, I'm pretty sure he put you down within ten minutes or so. A long time ago. Oh yeah, no, I I, I put him down as soon as we were away from those jobs. Oh, really? Okay. No chance I've been carrying you this long. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) For days on end. Uh, All right, so I'm tired too. (laughs) <laughs> what you know about Nardek is it is a fairly sparsely populated nation. It's mostly just halflings that live in small, out-of-the-way towns and villages, and they tend to keep to themselves. Hmm. And a human king claims authority over the area, but he exercises very little actual power. Mostly rules hmm. the few human settlements that are around. And he, he exercises very little, too, so he's not in good shape. <laughs> that's what I, I mean, that's just what I've heard. <laughs> Word on the street. And the path eventually leads you to a larger road heading east to west. You've been heading north this whole time. And there are no signs. I don't believe any of you are familiar with this region. No. Shall I make a ranger check, fellas? I think that's one of the only things you're good for. I would have to agree. <laughs> Weren't we going to replace Shaba a while back when we realized that his services were no longer needed? Just like with a random NPC, like any, anything would be better than having Shaba. Hey, Nibrin, what are you doing these days? <laughs> Can you hold a sword? Perfect. <laughs> okay, so what are you trying to do, Shaba? Find the green spire. <laughs> make a the green spire check. Yes, make a green spire come a the check. <laughs> Why don't you just ask the birds? Don't you still know speak with animals? Uh, I do. I could use my primeval awareness. Well, you could find some small animal around pretty easily. Yeah. I use my primeval awareness to establish a powerful link to the beasts in the land around me. <laughs> and then I'll use that innate ability to communicate with those said beasts. I expect that when I do that, they will recognize me as a kindred spirit. So that I can communicate simple ideas to them through sounds and gestures, read their basic moods and intent, and learn their emotional state, short-term needs, and how to persuade them. Wasn't the last time you used this, like, when we talked to the foxes? Yeah. And then we made the joke, <laughs> what does the fox say? That was like an episode, like, 27 or so. Uh, it, was, it was a while ago. It's been a long time. It was more recently than that, but yeah, it was, it's been a while. Like 50-something. Yeah. That's when the, we did the fox joke? Yes. Mm. That's still forever ago. It was a while. It was probably back in the maybe 60s or 70s. I can't remember. But yeah. So I will spend one minute in concentration to determine if any of my favorite enemies lurk within five miles. So if there are any beasts <laughs> around me. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you search around the area. You use your intuition and ranger skills. And you locate... A deer off in a oh. small clearing ahead of you. Well, hello, little one. <laughs> I give it a nice, um, I, I pick a little plant that I know, the flower that I know deers like to eat, and I give it to the little thing. The little, is it a, is it a boy or a girl deer? It's female doe. I give it to the little lady, and I <laughs> give her a nice pat on the back, and I spend a moment 
bonding with her. You now have a new animal companion to replace Stripey. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> it is my battle deer. <laughs> Enemies <laughs> cower before the might. Wouldn't you want a male deer as your battle deer? Because she's not going to grow antlers the same way. Yeah. I can just, I can create, I can fashion some paper mache antlers <laughs> and put them on her to make her look more fearsome. I ask her if she's seen any large man-made structures lately. Are you doing speak with animals? Yes. So you can actually talk to the deer? Yes. Does that cost you a spell slot, Shaba? It sure does, Tokus. Oh, man. We gotta do it, though. Probably. Yep. Probably. I cast Speak with Animals. So yes, a herd of small people like your friends live in that direction. And she points her head off towards the east. Toward the mm. east. Down the road to the east? Well, the same direction, yes. Mm. All right, mm. thanks. Have a good one. <laughs> well, guys, let's... Set off down the road. What, wait, what did you learn, Shaba? We just saw you, like, making weird noises and petting a deer for about an hour. Yep. And feeding it flowers. <laughs> I learned that we're headed east. I say, hey, you can come if you want. Or the deer? Yes. Not, not to Aslan Tokus. They can, they can always come, but... I will stay here and continue feeding on the tree bark. Uh, well, <laughs> here's some additional tree bark for your dessert later. <laughs> <laughs> and picks the bark off the same tree she was eating off of. And hands it <laughs> I, just get the, I just get the bark that's a little higher up that maybe she couldn't reach by herself. Ah, uh, there you go. And get her a nice big chunk of it. I say, oh, so the green spire is, is uh, out east? Is that what she told you? The people who know where the green spire is are out east. Mm, okay. That's the seems to be the nearest settlement. So we got to go there, ask them where the green spire is, if they know where it is. And apparently they're your kind, question mark, or Tokus's kind. They're little people, she said. My kind? She said they're little people. So they're probably as those kind. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah, they're probably just halflings. Yeah, just halflings. You heard mm. that, right, Asla? Uh, oh, I did. I did. When, it, when our annual salary increases come around, I just want you to remember <laughs> that. Just halflings, I believe, was the terminology that uh, <laughs> that was used in that particular instance. Yeah, that's right. I believe the uh, the percentages are shifting slightly in Shaba's favor at this point. Shaba likes writes that down, <laughs> quoting me, Tokus, Tokus Elton. Um, yeah, just halflings, Tokus Elton. The year after the emperor of, or the year after the empire of, you know, right. 2037. 236. <laughs> or t- 236. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Huh. Per- performance reviews are right around the corner, actually. Mm, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, looks like the only reason we know where to go next is because of me. I'll also remind <laughs> you of that. As well, <laughs> I will lead the way down the East Road. Yes, please do. And uh, Aslo flips his friendship medallion Shaba side up. <laughs> <laughs> Tokus starts plotting uh, how to kill Shaba and, and, take, and take all the money for himself. Like, Dark Tokus starts to manifest in his mind in a real, real way. <laughs> I just carried you uh, up a mountainside, and you're going to get sore over a little performance review? I've been trying to get a raise this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> You don't want to get in the way of Tokus's ambition. <laughs> you got to raise. You're wearing it. I try to... Let me make a roll. I try to fight the... Oh, that's pretty good. I rolled a 19. I try to fight Dark Tokus's thoughts mm. and, like, whispers to myself. Uh, about, so it's like a will yeah. save? It's like, yeah, it's like, kill Shaba. <laughs> Just kill well, with a natural 19, it's, it seems like you've talked yourself out of it. Yeah, no, I talked myself out of it. I remember all the good times, <laughs> and I still keep Shaba Medallion, Shaba side up. Oh, all mm-hmm. right. All right. Well, I got, we got Shabas all around. And Shaba, which <laughs> side is your medallion set to? That's all, my, my medallion's also Shaba side up. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a new medallion for myself that has just me on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's Asla set up because I'm trying to butter him up for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, moving right along. Yeah, please. You head off down the road to the east, and about half an hour later, Aslo, you realize that this area looks like the sort of place that halflings would inhabit. Mm. You can see... A little bit of cleared ground where there aren't quite so many trees. There's hills with little overhangs and stuff, only a few feet tall. And 
if you hadn't been looking for it specifically, you probably wouldn't have known that there's a village here, but you are pretty sure that there is one, just judging from the terrain and what you have been told. Hmm. Okay. So if you head off the road, you might find one. All right. Sweet. Well, then, um, I say we head in that direction. I agree. You walk a little ways off the road, and sure enough, you soon find the familiar sight of a nice round hobbit door. Mm. Mm, what strange manner of creatures live in a place like this? <laughs> 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 Only the best kind, Shaba. Because I can't say hobbit. Did I say hobbit door? <laughs> That's okay. Uh-oh. We'll let it slide. Halfling door. Toka starts to plot with Shaba when Asla wasn't looking. Shaba, if we can get him a date and get him interested in some of his own kind, we don't have to go on that rescue mission to Marengar anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> if we can just get him a new girlfriend. <laughs> then he just forgets all about Nalia. Y- he'll forget about him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean... In fairness, maybe there's no hobbit woman that exists that can compare to an elegant, elvish female, but we'll do our best. <laughs> Be on the lookout for uh, Aslo's type. What is Aslo's type? Uh, elvish, I think. Yeah, the Nelly uh, type. <laughs> pretty <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> so, you don't want to travel and see the world and experience Marengar firsthand? I just feel like that mission is a really bad idea considering he's a wanted criminal. <laughs> Over there, especially. Oh, so it's more for his own safety that you're trying to persuade him out of it. Also, my own safety. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I have a little voice inside my mind that literally won't let me make decisions like that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. I don't want to force anything that's not meant to be, you know? Yeah, but we can, we can help set the mood, you know? Oh, sure. Check out some of, the, some of the good date spots in town and hmm. get him a new tux. Okay. All right. Sort of wingman for him. You're talking about? Yeah. 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 Like we're at the bar and we're ha- like making it like making it seem like he's a real man's man, and then we excuse ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. All right. Yeah. Where's the nearest tavern? It's the best place to find scuttlebutt in a halfling town. <laughs> What's this place called anyway? Is there a sign out front? The town, I mean. This is the town of the Green Spire. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, there's also a gigantic green tower right in the middle of town. <laughs> that, that can't be what we're looking for. Let's, no. just, let's get back to matchmaking. No, you're still a country away from there. Mm-hmm. So you find a little sign that's mostly been buried by dirt and moss over the years. It seems to be the name of the town, Underfoot. 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 Oh. Oh, yeah. Ah. It seems like your kind of place, tender toe. <laughs> yeah. Anything that mentions feet is definitely in Aslo's wheelhouse. That's my jam. And in honor of entering the town, Tokus takes off his cacophonous cowboy cleats. Look, all of a sudden I'm a hobbit. I just like like I comb the hair <laughs> on my toes, on my feet. Perfect. <laughs> Into little curls, yeah. I fit right in. Yeah, I look just like him. Stripey joins you. He doesn't have shoes on either. Yeah, I mean, my, my wig is also a hobbit hair wig, so I fit right in. I won't even know, except for my facial structure, my accent, the way that I smell. I skinned the hobbits myself. Harvested from the scalps of at least a dozen hobbits. Yeah. Or halflings. I bet I could pass as hobbit with, like, a little bit of practice. Probably. A little bit of a disguise kit. Actually, Aslo, can you disguise kit me so that I look like a hobbit? I think all you need is like a little bit of refinement, maybe some manners. Some class. Yeah, a little bit of class. An ounce of tact. Better taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll be in good shape. All right, so I take an etiquette class. I would also like to be disguised as a halfling, Aslo, please. (laughs) We could describe Stripey as a halfling. (laughs) I just want to fit in around here. I give you Tokus's wig. Oh, thanks. There you go. What? Hey, what? Hey. (laughs) You can't just take that off me without permission. I need, you need consent. (laughs) Okay, I give it back. It's it's a part of me. Thank you. And I I put it on, but I put it on kind of crooked. Oh, I fix it for you. Like I always do. Okay, thanks, Shava. You just you have that like aerial view. You don't even need a mirror. You can yeah. just like make sure that it's level. Exactly. Yeah. Do we see any little people walking around? Not at the moment, but it would make sense if they're inside since it's cold weather. All right. Is it getting dark or is it daytime? Late afternoon. Okay. I bet people are on their way to the bar to the ye old inn. So we look for we follow the crowds, even if there are no crowds. <laughs> Let's just knock on a nearby door. How about? Yes. Okay. I have Stripey make a smell the ale check. 
and we follow his nose. <laughs> As though you could probably pick out which one is the tavern if you wanted to, or you could just go to a random house. Okay. Um, Let's just crash someone's house. Hey, can we come in and have a couple <laughs> of drinks, maybe? No, that's fine. Let's go to the tavern. I like that. Okay. So this is a slightly larger hill compared to the others, and you can see the light through the windows showing signs of a nice warm fire inside. So you open the door, and one of the halflings here is just... He has a cloth that he's using to wipe down some of the used mugs, clean them up. He sets the mug down on the table as you enter and says, Ah, welcome, friends. Welcome to the hearth and home away from home. Oh, Mm. I like that name. It's a long name. Yes. You might want to think about shortening it up a little bit just for... (laughs) Just to grow your, you know, your brand a little bit easier. Do you even fit in here, Shaba? I do not. Um, I am. <laughs> Is that just your face at the door, like your head poking in? <laughs> yeah, I'm walking on my knees, actually, right now. It's sort of like Gandalf in Bilbo's house, mm. except even worse. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Many thanks to you. Uh, I'll have to leave my large friend outside, but nope, no, I guess no, he will just... not. I'm still here. I'm inside. <laughs> You're, are you just crawling on all fours at this point? Oh, yes, please, please. Everyone's welcome. Come inside. Yes, I will be like on my knees, but like not standing on my knees. You know what I mean? Like sitting on my knees. Can he or can he not fit through the doorway? That's the real question. Mm. Well, the door is plenty big. Oh, okay. All right. So they're used to having, like, human patrons. Are you used to having humans? Or gnomes, for that matter? You got a pretty big place here for a halfling joint. We don't see very many guests. Occasional other halflings come by and a few humans now and then. Well, I'm no human. So it's mostly uh, local town folk that come in here, huh? Yes, although we do have one room for guests. Hmm. We'll take it. (laughs) Yes, we will. We are very cold after traveling many leagues. So we would like a room, please. The room. Certainly. I'll take uh, three silver for the night. All right. I'll give you room and board. It's a deal. Now, tell me, pray tell, could you point us, please, in the direction of not just any green spire, but the green spire? (laughs) Uh, The green spire, huh? Where is that again? That's what we were hoping you would... Tell us. Yeah. That's, uh, that's in Asherfeld, right? Yep. Uh, yes, indeed. Asherfeld's north of here, so, uh, your best bet would probably be if you head west on the main road about an hour and a half, two hours, then turn north, there's a small road that heads that way. But wait, we just came east. So we go back west and then turn north? Yes, that should be the most direct route. You could also just head straight north through the hills, but... Oh, okay. I mean, that's probably not the safest way to go. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, west, hour and a half, two hours, turn north, you'll find a small road there. I don't think it's all that well-traveled. Tokus points this out. You know, we've run into this issue before where Shaba doesn't like taking directions from other people. (laughs) Yeah, I don't need directions. No, let's just listen to the barkeep, okay? He knows. Barkeep, by the way, what's your name? I, I, wanna, I would like to not keep calling you barkeep. <laughs> My charisma is showing, or I lack like thereof. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am Tardin. And what's your name? Tardin Sauce. All right, it's good to see you. <laughs> Tokus is the name. Shiaba here. Born of Crag and Thunder, son of Pachaka, last of the Dabide Clan Exile. And Aslo Action, Tendertoe, please. at your service. <laughs> Aslo just, like, pushes you out of the way and just, like, stops you mid-introduction. I'm surprised we've never done that to you before and cut you off. Oh, I'm you always have. just trust me, so you have. mesmerized. Oh, I have yep. cut you off? Several times. Yep. It's one of the reasons why I don't do that full intro very often anymore. <laughs> but I, I just cut you off. No, either you or Aslo just... Ta- starts talking yeah, over me, so push you aside. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have heard it a couple times. So at least a few. <laughs> While you're here, don't just stand around there. Please make yourselves at home. Have a seat by the fire. Oh, thanks. We do. Say, Tarden, are there any girls in this village? And by girls, I mean halfling women. Why, of course. That seems a rather strange question coming from a fellow such as yourself. Yes, I'm sorry. Never mind. Forget I said anything. (laughs) And and are they available and single and interested in dating our... Tokus, forget about it. I've said too much. (laughs) Shaba, I didn't know you were looking. That's exciting. Well, you know. He's like, actually, there's a beauty pageant coming up tomorrow if you stay. (laughs) (laughs) We're we're picking Miss Halfling tomorrow, so (laughs) just just stick around for the festivities. 
That would be all too convenient, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes, it would be. <laughs> it would be like they spawned a little mini quest because of our conversation earlier. <laughs> Thane, Thane's not going to do that at all. He's just giving me the look. He's just giving me a stare down right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go sit by the fire. I look around to see if there's any girls there. Do you have an ogre slaying knife of plus nine? (laughs) (laughs) There's one woman who you think is probably Tartan's wife. Hmm. (laughs) I go up to her. Have you met my friend Aslo? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Could ask her some questions to find out if she's Tartan's wife. Hey, you know our friend Tartan we just met? (laughs) You can safely say I know him better than I'd like to after all these years. (laughs) Ah, Sounds like you guys go way back. Did you you get hitched? Sounds like you might even be married. (laughs) Did you get hitched? You might even be married. (laughs) She says, oh, did we? (laughs) No regrets. Oh, no, I don't regret it. It's just, you know, married life wears on you after a while sometimes. Mm, Especially, mm. she pats her belly a few times. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got three already and another one on the way. So. Oh, uh, congratulations. Well, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you don't happen to know of any young eligible bachelorettes in town, do you? I might. Who's asking? I happen to be looking. For a friend, of course. <laughs> yeah, for a friend. We're, we're looking for a friend, and Antokas chimes in. Wow. And I look at her and meet her eyes, and then I glance over at Aslo, and I give her a little eyebrow raise. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Shaba, that's, that's so kind of you. Who's this friend of yours? <laughs> well, you don't know him, but, um, oh. you know, we go way back, and uh, I just kind of figured that in a, a place like this, there might be, you know, some, some eligible bachelorettes that he might fancy. Oh, Cool. I'm not sure how you're going to get him here to meet someone, but... Well, I'll send him a, a flying telegram. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, in the form of a homing pigeon. <laughs> uh, he is a good friend of mine, and, um, you know, just looking out for him. Sh- your, your friend Shaba knows how to play matchmaker every now and then. Mrs. Tartan <laughs> gives you kind of a slow, knowing nod. <laughs> well... I don't know that I'm all too keen on playing matchmaker for someone I just met, but if your your friend came by and stuck around for a while, I might be able to hook him up with someone. Okay. Hmm. All right. Man, I'll have to send him a letter then, Shaba. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely tell him to come and stay for a visit. All right. Well, we should probably be going then. <laughs> you just bought a room. For the- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we-, <laughs> we should probably be going to bed late afternoon. Early afternoon, whenever it is. It's like, it's like five o'clock. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll stay. Why don't we get uh, the special? Let's get the special. Let's get casks of their finest grog, and let's just let's just hang out, guys. Like old times. We've yeah. been on the road and adventuring for so long now. We will. Why don't we just stretch those legs? And Aslo, why don't you start up some conversation with with some of the girls that come in just for old times' sake? Work those old mouth muscles of yours. Aslo charms. Yeah. Uh, how large are your smallest uh, barrels of ale? Um, <laughs> that's an odd question. Yeah, we, we would like to order a keg, please. Yeah, I was going to order like a glass, but I figured that would be like a shot glass for Shaba. We have some gallon-sized portable barrels. Perfect. I'll have one of those. <laughs> but our specialty really is our brandy. Oh, mm. that's interesting. You should give that a try. Mm. That's a little different. So could we have a cask of your brandy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pour you all some mugs. What do they say? Ale before liquor does the job quicker, but liquor before ale <laughs> makes a man pale? I can't remember how that rhyme goes. Anyway. Oh, beer before liquor never... S- Sicker, never, sicker. Never sicker. Yes. Candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker, something like that. All right. Well, let's have the brandy first then. <laughs> well, why don't we just mix them together if you're trying to get smashed? <laughs> is that your plan? <laughs> sure. Just give it to us all straight. Just the whole thing. <laughs> Apparently, brandy is actually generally an after dinner thing. So uh-huh. you can have some ale now, and then we'll pour you some brandy once the meal is over. You can truly enjoy what we have. All right. Yeah. That sounds delightful. How much is all that going to cost us? Well, <laughs> Aslo take, will take care of that. <laughs> the three silver is enough for a room and board. It's oh, okay. oh, oh, wow. The food here isn't anything fancy or special. Oh. Don't tell her that, though. 
<laughs> Don't let her hear you say that, thing. She'll get real <laughs> uppity about it. Uh, so let's have a seat at a proper table, right? Because we're sitting by the fire now. So maybe I can get comfortable at a hobbit-sized table. I don't know how, but we're going to need somewhere to eat. We'll sit at a table, and then we'll bring another table, and then you sit on the table. I will stack two tables on top of one another. <laughs> and, and sit on that. <laughs> sit on that. Um, I mean, you could sit at the table normally and just have your legs off to the side. Okay. Yeah, we'll go that route then. I mean, we don't have to spend all night actually spending all night here. No. <laughs> I would prefer not to. Yeah, I'd prefer not to roleplay dating Thane, personally. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, mm. Thane, but... <laughs> so if you have some other questions or information that you would like to learn here, feel free to ask away. Otherwise, you enjoy your meal and your after-meal beverage. You bed down for the night and you wake up in the morning ready to go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. The only thing I'd like to ask before we leave in the morning is, are there any special rules or regulations in Asherfeld that we ought know about? Right, Mm. right. Asherfeld, they let us cast magic to our heart's content, but you can't draw a sword or bow. (laughs) Something like that. Or in Nardek, for that matter. Mm. Yeah. She said that in Nardek, the king has kind of like a loose-handed sort of ruling style. Hmm. Oh, so there's like bandits even in the towns. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> no, just that it's generally like a tranquil place, and he doesn't really need to enforce oh. stuff very strongly. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean halflings tend to keep to themselves, and it's mostly full of halflings. Yeah. Okay. As far as Asherfeld goes, what they can tell you about it is that it's ruled by a council of humans and elves, and the elves there tend to frown upon anything that disturbs nature. So they probably have some rules and laws regarding things that you can and cannot do with the trees, for example, Mm. or animals. So no poaching, things like that. Right. I'll have to do some extra hunting while we're in Nardic and store up some jerky for our trip through Asherfeld. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll set out on our merry way. Yes, indeed. It's too bad that we couldn't find someone for your friend, Shaba. Oh, no, I'm sure there are several people in this village that might make a suitable match for my friend. I'll just have to send him a letter just as soon as I find a carrier pigeon. I'm sure one will turn up. Yeah, I'm going to assume that part that we hand-waved, Aslo met like seven women and was still oblivious to the fact that he was trying to be set up to, by all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you were trying to help us set up Shaba's friends, so like we all played wingman? Yes, exactly. So I was like sitting there asking them questions right. for Shaba's friend, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for a friend of mine. And, like all three of us were doing that instead of... <laughs> yeah, so every time a halfling woman would come into the bar, I'd be like... Have you met my friend Aslo? And he'd be like, yeah, we're interviewing uh, someone. And I'm like, Aslo's a halfling, so he would have the right perspective on uh, on dating in the halfling world. On halfling romance. <laughs> That's right. And then basically each time that they realized that like he wasn't there and that we were all wing persons, they lost interest. <laughs> and then Tokus, like, as we're leaving the town, Tokus realizes, wait a minute, Aslo does have a girlfriend, but I don't. It could have been me. <laughs> Maybe I should have been interviewing these girls. Darn it! They're kind of gnomish-sized, kind of. Yeah, I mean, totally. They're sort of, like, keep to themselves and lazy, but I bet they'd be happy in, like, you know, <laughs> 50 feet underground in a tunnel somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry, Tokus. Your time will come. Okay. I mean, they're not safwagon sized but they are you-sized. <laughs> no, no, I'm waiting for gnomes. I'm yes. waiting mm, for gnomes. Mm-hmm. We'll so, you know, what do, they, what do they say? Uh, true gnome love waits. So mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to pace myself, Shaba. I don't want to just date anybody. That's right. You can't settle. Never settle. In fact, I think that we might be getting closer to finding some gnomes soon. Mightn't we? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Because Myrny ostensibly knows where there are more gnomes. Mm-hmm. You make your way back down the road from whence you came, and then past where you entered from the mountains, continuing along, and you find an old signpost that points north to Asherfeld. Can I say hi to the deer? Uh, it's not still there. Oh. (laughs) Hey, Shaba, I've been waiting for you. (laughs) Hi, I liked you so much that I decided to just stand here for two days. Um, <laughs> I'm going to name her Prudence, even though we'll never see her again. <laughs> She's dear Prudence. So, 
<laughs> okay. That's a that's a Beatles reference. Ah. Uh, there's going to be at least one person that gets it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are one listener who just got that joke. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, anyway. You resume your northward journey. Another couple of days pass. Once again, you pull your blankets over yourselves and rest by the fire after another tiring day. As Luch standing by on first watch as usual. When Tokus... As you close your eyes and begin to drift off to sleep, the next thing you realize, you wake up to find yourself engulfed in billowing fog on all sides. <gasps> fog? What? The air is damp and cold, and you can't see or hear anything but the fog and your own breath. Guys? You there, guys? Triple A team? Hear no response. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodness, uh, I will make loud noises with my cowboy cleats of cacophony. Not the charges, but I'll just stomp my feet. Guys, wake up! Where are you? You try to, but it seems like all of your sounds are muffled by the fog. Oh, no. Even your boots aren't making any loud noises. As you look around in confusion, calling for help, your stomach begins to churn, and your breathing grows heavy as you feel an immense pressure on your chest, right where the crystal once pierced it. Mm. <laughs> you push hard enough, and the crystal ejects out of your chest. You constipated. Ah, finally, I'm free. <laughs> If I just push a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pushing on you. Mm. I can't take this. Then something begins to change. The mist starts to swirl around you, and you can feel, rather than see, the fog begin to part, forming a path in front of you. A path? Gosh, I, you know, this is so cool, but I feel like I'm playing Control right now. I've been playing that game... And, like, it has these moments where the main character gets sucked into these other dimensions to, like, solve puzzles or learn things about her world. And then she comes back to reality. All right, anyway, so Tokus steps forth down the path into the unknown. You start walking forward, and the pressure on your chest grows stronger and stronger. Oh, oh, that was a bad decision. (laughs) Oh, it's like, it's like a, it's like indigestion. And then you begin to sense some deep darkness approaching along that path. In front of you looms, Stripey. (laughs) (laughs) I get out of bag and I start to hyperventilate into the bag. (laughs) You feel the darkness growing, and the light slowly fades around you as tendrils of fog seem to reach out for you. And you look up to see... A black robed figure materialize on the path. Oh my goodness! <laughs> they seem to be gliding closer towards you, slowly. Is this a dream? I. I, I don't know. What do you want with me? The figure says nothing, but instead extends its shadowy arm towards you. I, I don't accept this weird ten- <laughs> I don't- I don't shake hands with tentacle- shadow tentacles. Pardon me, sir. Do you have any gray poop on? <laughs> <laughs> I slap- I slap it out of- I, I try to slap the tentacle out of my face. No! Stay back! You wave your hands in front trying to block it, but your hand passes straight through this arm. And it disperses in little wisps of fog and continues moving closer. Stay back, spirit. I don't want to learn about the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> as, as far as we all know, like Tokus is uh, ag- agnostic at best. Do you do anything to defend yourself? Well, of course. I'm tr- I'm trying. Uh, uh. I brace myself. You realize that you don't have your weapons and armor at hand. Oh, no. Uh, do I have my Violapult? That would be a weapon. Oh, no, I have no way to use my spells, basically. Oh, no, I'm helpless. You, you realize that you're in your underwear. <laughs> like all bad dreams. I'm standing in front of the whole class <laughs> in my boxers, and it's show and tell. Well, Tokus, what did you come to show and tell us? Um, Oh no, not again, not this dream again. <laughs> In front of thousands of gnomes. 
<laughs> they're all laughing at me. No. Okay, what, so what happens? The figure raises its arm towards your forehead, and for a brief moment, just as it touches, you feel your mind racing with all sorts of scattered thoughts, and then suddenly you burst awake with a shout. <laughs> Guys, uh, 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 the cult, the dream, the cult of Altoria, dream, shadow tokus, scary nightmare. Tokus, uh, what? Uh, what is going on? Why did you wake me up? I mean, no, I, I was on watch. I, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's Aslo. happening? Is that Aslo or is that uh, Shaba and Stripey's <laughs> snoring in unison? Yeah, that's the two of them snoring. Aslo's awake, though, because I'm on watch. Oh, yeah, and you've been on watch for about an hour at this point. And I grab Aslo by the collar and I say, <laughs> The cult! The cult is in my head! They're in, the, in my chest where the crystal was. It, it hurt, and the pressure, and the shadows, Tokus. and tentacle handshakes. But there's uh, no hands! What do you mean? There's no hands! Tokus, calm down. They didn't have any hands! <laughs> I Get a hold of yourself, <laughs> man, and I uh, slap him. Okay, okay. Uh, Pull yourself uh, together. Uh, what is the meaning of this? I, I've never seen such a dream like this before. I mean, I've had visions and... Shadow Tokus has tried to speak to me before. You guys know him as Shadow Tokus, right? Uh, who are you talking about? Uh, never mind, my alter ego. It doesn't matter. So, <laughs> I had a very vivid dream where something tried to reach out to me, and just as it touched my forehead, I woke up. It wanted to get closer. I don't know how else to explain it, but it was so dark. That is strange indeed. Did I drink too much when we were at the bar? Yeah, maybe you had some bad ale or something. I don't know. Mm. Why don't you lay back down, go to sleep. Shaba and I will quietly pack up all of our belongings and just walk away and, and leave you here <laughs> to rest. How about that? Because you're kind of freaking me out a little bit. Wait, wait. Are you, are you firing me? What? No. Uh -huh. Oh, did, wait, did I say that out loud? That was just, I was thinking about that. But. <laughs> no, it was a dream, but it felt so real. It is strange. Have you, you've never had this kind of dream before? <laughs> no, I mean, did you like hypnotic patter me or something? Uh, not that I know of. Have you ever hypnotic patterned me, Aslo? And Tokus what? tries to see if he, you've never <laughs> used your magic on me, right? Before? Uh, No. No, of course not. Because I do remember that one time we were in the sewer, and I remember getting blasted. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was that time. I remember nearly <laughs> dying, and then... Okay, so this isn't like that. Like, you weren't playing tricks on me in my sleep. Right. No, I was not. Okay. Well, then, legitimately, I had, like, a dream that was basically a vision of the future to come. Wait, how did you know it was the future? Wait a minute. Do we know what Sherikoth looks like? Sherikoth, Sherikoth. Sherikoth, Sherikoth. Um, no, we don't. What if that was... A vision of Sherikov. Um, that would be weird indeed, yeah. No, but what if I'm connected to him because of the crystal? What if we're hmm. kindred spirits? What if he was calling out to me to have me join the cult? Shut up, Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then Tok Tokus starts to put on his, his cult robe. No, no, stop it. And yeah. I rip, rip him oh, back down. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was calling to me like it was gentle. I mean, it was painful because of the pressure in my chest, but it was almost like trying to draw me in, you know? Hmm. I don't know what it means, basically. I need somebody to interpret my dreams. Can we go to a dream interpreter? Perhaps at the Green Spire we can. These are strange portents indeed. I guess I can't sleep ever again, so it won't happen. Yeah, why don't you just take watch for the rest of the night? <laughs> okay. And I'll get some shut-eye. Yeah, I can't, I can't fall asleep after that dream anyway. So. <laughs> okay. I'll get my, my nine hours that I require every night. All right. Good night, Tokus. And I immediately fall asleep. <laughs> Have fun being in the dark by yourself. No consoling at all. Shaba's still asleep, by the way. Yeah, so I whisper, I whisper sweetly to Shaba, I'll take over your watch tonight. Rest well, sweet prince. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I gently pet pet Stripey, which is very out of character for Tokus, but I think I, I believe it's like the last time I'll see them, and and I just I just want them to remember the sweeter side, the non shadow side of myself, mm. and uh, and I and I spend the rest of the night toiling away, uh, working on a present for everyone mm. with my remaining parts. Nice. Like an hour after dawn, Shaba shoots up out of bed, 
and grabs his bow and he's like, huh, Tokus, you never woke me up for the Don Watch. What happened? No, I I told you, sweet prince. I mean, Sh- Shaba, I told you. <laughs> I told you that you could just rest, that I, I can't fall asleep. I'll tell you about it tomorrow, unless you want me to tell you now. Anyway, so I had this dream and then Tokus <laughs> relays the story to Shaba. <laughs> What? Do you think it was really him? Who else could have been so powerful to reach through the dream world, realm, place, Mm -hmm. universe, (laughs) into my chest, into my mind? Maybe the crystal has connected you to him. Maybe we were always connected. Hmm. Maybe that's how the cult's been tracking us this whole time. Remember that big black thing that was flying around? You know, I don't think you were always connected. I think it's literally just the crystal. We need to cut it out. We need to cut out my heart. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe Mernie knows how. No, not your... You, the crystal's not embedded in your heart. You're not Iron Man. The heart, Shaba. We must attack the heart. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe Mernie knows how to cleanse you of the crystal more fully than Isric did. Mm. Well, I'm really concerned because if that was us just being linked and he was in my dream and I was in his dream, he knows what I look like. No, I think he was just in yours. He knows maybe where I am right now. He knows my thoughts. Hmm. You just start pulling your, your wig out. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> he knows who I am. He knows everything about me. That's worst case scenario, though, Shaba. Best case, yeah. I just ate some bad food at the place and it had a delayed <laughs> effect. And I drank, I, I drank too much, which also had a delayed effect. And, and I just, I'm sleeping it off. I, I'm <laughs> three days, three days ago. And, and, yeah. and I don't know what to think anymore. I don't know if I'm safe to be with you guys anymore if I'm really connected to the cult now. Well, welcome to the club. Aslo hasn't been safe to be with us for months. <laughs> so I'm pretty much the only safe one around here. Are you safe, Shaba? Oh, <laughs> I'm super safe. You kidding me? Yeah, but like, what if we happened upon your tribe? Then they'd be like, ew, get away from this. <laughs> they wouldn't stone us? I mean, they wouldn't boulder us? Uh, maybe me, but not you guys. Hmm. Oh, okay. It's not like we're your accomplices or something and we wouldn't step in front of said boulders with our ogre gauntlets and try to protect you. Well, you might do that, but that would be your own fault. (laughs) (laughs) And I make a pledge to Shaba. Shaba, after that really traumatic dream, I promise I will always protect you. Thanks, Tukas. I'm pretty sure you've promised me that before, but I will take a re-up on that. (laughs) I'll accept it. But I I don't promise to protect Stripey. Okay, that's fine. I'll accept your, your promise of renewal. And with that, maybe we should we should wake up Aslo and hit the road. Uh, no, no, no. He, he he heard the whole story and he went right back to sleep. Oh, you guys didn't really. You guys, you didn't wake me up to tell me. No, no. <laughs> All right, <laughs> cool. I guess. Yeah, you you didn't wake up at my screams. Oh, yeah, I'm a deep sleeper. But it feels more like a vision. I don't want to call it a dream. I think that really happened in my mind's eye, in the dream realm. I tend to be a very light sleeper, except when it comes to the screams of those closest to me. (laughs) (laughs) I can sleep through just about anything where that's concerned. Yeah, you looked really content, like like you were sleeping like this, and Stripey was on your chest, and you guys were like snoring in unison, Mm. and I just, Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know. Yeah, we do that sometimes. It's fun. (laughs) All right, well, let's try not to have any more dreams like that, huh? I think you should probably just stay awake for a good while. Yeah, yeah, that's probably best. Uh, I'll finish up the watch. Why don't you uh, get some more shut eye? Oh no, it's an hour after dawn. Now we're we're get, we're fixing to have breakfast. Okay, well, I usually have breakfast ready for you guys when you wake up, since I take the dawn watch. Like that's how you normally wake up from the smell of the wonderful food that I'm mm-hmm. cooking for you. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Shaba, why don't why don't I help you make breakfast for once? Uh, I don't think your assistance will be required. <laughs> No oh. offense. I was trying to do uh, uh, what they call a nice gesture. Yeah, well, you're not the greatest. I was trying to turn over world. a new leaf. Oh, that's true. <laughs> now the whole the whole pledge to protect me always that passes for a nice gesture. So mm. we, that's your good deed for the day. We can stop there. <laughs> 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 Don't feel the need to be overly not yourself. <laughs> Just just getting that out of the way soon, so now I don't have to help anyone else today. Right. All right. Well, I mean, well, if you want to protect me with your life, that's cool. Yeah, I would happily catch boulders out of the air that are coming to smash you in the face <laughs> with my new <laughs> ogre gauntlets. Uh, anyway, so let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, wake up Aslo and let's get some breakfast going, shall we? All right. 
So we had some breakfast. We uh, pack up our stuff and we head back out on that old lonesome road. And I try to pretend as if nothing happened. <laughs> perfectly neurally normal, guys. Just perfectly neurally normal mm-hmm. tokus. Just... Just walking along. You continue moving north, and at long last, your path leads you across a small bridge over a river that marks the border of Asherfeld. Hey, all right. Yeah. As soon as you set foot on the other side, you feel a change in the air. Hmm. Your neck tingles as you sense traces of raw magic all around you. Ooh, whoa. Something about the forest here seems somehow more alive than the forests you've passed through until now. Even with the trees having shed all their leaves for the winter. That is magical. Hmm. Do we want to try to see what this magic is? Yeah. Yeah. Could we make an arcana check? Sure. Tokus gets a six. That is a natty twinzo. Oh. Ooh. For Aslo. Nice. Getting him out of the way on the unimportant rolls. <laughs> Shaba got a seven. <laughs> well, no, we want to know what's causing this aura. Yeah, certainly. Just on the general scale of like importanceness, this one's pretty low. Twenty is a twenty. I mean, you can't point to any specific spell, but this definitely feels like the work of elves. It seems like an ancient magic that's protecting this whole place, and you just get the feeling that if you're doing something that would upset the elves, then they're going to know about it, and perhaps worse than that will happen to you. All right, some sort of magical protection guards this forest. Guys, I think we have to, for the rest of our journey here, we have to stay on the path. Don't accidentally step off and, like, crush any butterflies or anything. Because I've read Mm -hmm. that book and it doesn't Mm -hmm. go well. (laughs) Definitely. So, we stay on the path as we continue to the Green Spire. Half a day farther along the road leads you to a town. Town isn't so much built in the woods as it is a part of the woods. The houses, while clearly not natural, have such a strong sense of nature and belonging that you could easily imagine them being placed there by the forest itself. Everything here just fits and feels comfortable and as if it always belonged that way. As if we always belonged this way. And Tokus starts to notice his feet sprout roots and becomes... (laughs) A tree. (laughs) I don't know what's happening. We alternate into trees. Game over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we become trees. We've been absorbed by the magic forest. Yeah, and then Stripey's like a little bush. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around the town, you notice that both elves and humans live here. In harmony? How is this possible? Preposterous. <laughs> They seem to be going about their daily business. A few of them do pay attention to you, look your way, and give you some inquisitive looks, but none of them seem like they're going to come up and talk to you. You could talk to someone, or you could just keep on walking through town. Yeah, sure. I'll talk to some elf lady. Who's the first elf lady that passes? Excuse me, excuse me, madam? Yes, mountainous one. Have you met my friend Aslo? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I meant, what is this place? This is the village of Aesferath. Wow. Can you spell Aesferath. that for me real quick? A-E-S-F-E-R-A-T-H. <laughs> wow. Aesferath. And what do you guys do here exactly? We live our lives just as any. But surely you must feel the aura of raw magic in the air. Of course. That's not normal. That's new to us. We're, we're travelers. We've never been here before, so it's it's a different sort of feeling for us. What is that? The ancient magics permeate this land. Do you not find it calming, soothing? Oh, definitely. It's all of the above. It's just new to us, so we just weren't sure what it was all about. But thank you for your explanation. By the way, have you met my friend Aslo? He's a rather charming <laughs> hobbit. I mean, halfling. Hi, Aslo Tendertow. At your service. And Tokus blurts out to, like, ruin the conversation. He's like, oh, yeah, and we already know that he has a track record for liking female elves. So (laughs) there's that out in the open. (laughs) She gives you a polite half bow. Welcome to our land, Tendertoe. Many thanks. I will try to keep my friends in line while we're staying with you. (laughs) Do you give me, like, a nice elbow for that comment? (laughs) And I assume we look for a place to spend the night again? Yes, I ask the lady, do you happen to know of a public gathering place where one might find food and good cheer, a warm bed perhaps? 
Yes, you might try the gilt stag. Mm. And she gestures over towards a decently large structure off to the side. That sounds right in our pay grade, eh, fellas? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, madam. Enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, night, <laughs> morning. And good evening and good night. <laughs> and good night. If I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, good evening and good and night. Good night. It's probably been close to a day since you last camped, so it's a little bit short if you're trying to get the most out of your travel time, but you could stop here. Do we want to stop here? What if I have another dream, guys, and I wake up in the middle of the night screaming? But Tokus, this place is surrounded in protective, beneficial ancient magics. Mm. Mm. Okay, yep, I'm in. Perhaps Shadokath cannot reach you here. Don't say his name! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't want the voice inside of my head to know that we're talking about where the voice maybe came from or is connected to her. I, I don't... Shabbat, just... I don't want to be thinking about this right now. He who must not be named. Yes, he who shall not be named perhaps cannot reach you here. Yeah. Maybe we should call him... We should make up a nickname for him instead of calling him by his actual name. What about Felmendar? So we can say perhaps <laughs> Felmendar... Just a random thing I thought of. Oh, and we have to put quotations around it that our listeners can't see. Yeah, we have to put air quotes. On this audio <laughs> medium. Felmendar, yeah. <laughs> Cannot reach you here. We could call him Cher. No, that's part of his name. Well, regardless, let's just not talk about that guy for a moment, yes. okay? And let's just rest. I need I need to collect my thoughts, and I, I pulled a really long watch yesterday so I could really use some rest, guys. Yeah. Let's take a rest, and let's also, uh, well, maybe we'll evaluate the whole dark crystal thing once we get to the green spire, once we talk to Mernie. Yeah. If we get to talk to Mernie. <laughs> I certainly hope we will. Yeah, me too. That If we don't, that means we didn't make it, so something about this place <laughs> isn't like it seems. We didn't make it in time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would rest up while you're here, Tokus, because this may be the last chance you get to sleep in a long while. All right, so I go up to bed early and start resting, and you guys hang out at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we party without you. Mm -hmm. Now go to bed early, Tokus. <laughs> you have a big day ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do while you're in the tavern? Uh, what's the cost for room and board? Pick what you want to pay between, like, two and six silver. Okay. Two silver, Aslo chooses. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, Aslo, but my goals for the evening are to get a full belly, get moderately sloshed, and go to bed. <laughs> Can we do that on two silver? Do you want to do that in that exact order? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think we can manage that on two silver. You're not going to get any nice alcohol or anything for that much, but... Mm. To get Shaba sloshed, surely it's a little more expensive. Yeah, it takes a bit. Yeah, sloshing is uh, on your personal dime, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Not a company expense. So then maybe we go with the less full belly in that case. <laughs> well, you can go for tipsy instead of sloshed. That's yeah. less silver as well. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll just skip dinner then, and I'll eat a big breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll still buy the alcohol? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a nice elven blackberry wine. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's my jam yeah. right there. They actually do make it into jam as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my wine and my jam. <laughs> I just have a cup of wine in one hand and a jar of jelly in the other. <laughs> I sip one and slurp the other. <laughs> and then we crash hard. We do a little jig with the jam and the, ju and the yeah. wine and... <laughs> I call it a jam and jelly jig. <laughs> Actually, blackberry is our only produce around here. We just eat blackberry all day and all night. We're Grissant's number one exporter of blackberries. <laughs> I don't know why we talk like this. We are elves, after We're all. We're country elves. <laughs> We're wood elves. <laughs> <laughs> We're from the backwoods, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> We're the backest wood elves you ever met. Just like have like some blackberry moonshine in their tubs. Yeah, we got the moonshine stills out in the back. <laughs> well, shoot. Uh, well, howdy. Do you have any wounds that need healing? We got blackberry for that too. <laughs> <laughs> Just rub some blackberry jam into it. Good as new. <laughs> <laughs> 
you look like you need to grow some hair there, son. Yeah, take some blackberry. Just rub that on in it. Toka sticks off his wig and slathers blackberry jam all over his scalp. And you just wrap your head in one of the towel, the hotel towels, uh, just to keep it, let it soak in. Uh, I've heard that this works. <laughs> some uh, snake oil salesman gave me uh, some some hair growth uh, blackberry jam, so give yeah. it a go. <laughs> Snake oil, Sam. All right, so let's uh, eat and drink and be merry and go to bed. All right. <laughs> Move on. And tomorrow you die. Uh, all right. So, yeah, you can pass on through, not gaining or not asking for any more information. Just keep on going north. I mean, you generally know where the green spire is. It's at the northern end of the country. Okay. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll say you just mention it. Yeah. You know, the, someone in the tavern gives you some directions on which roads to take. Yeah, just real quick to clarify that we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. I thought Shaba asked directions from no one. Well, he's changing his ways. And Tokus, are you planning to sleep as normal, just out of curiosity, for the rest of this trip? At least as long as you're in the magic? Sure. Maybe what uh, Shaba said, like, consoled me, and maybe I think I will be protected. So yes, I'll sleep as per normal. Okay. Well, nothing happens that night. Okay. Good. Well, well Sherikoth was busy. He didn't have time to hang out. He was busy invading someone else's dream. As soon as you say his name, he shows up and attacks you. <laughs> That's why we can't say his name anymore. Two more days pass in travel as you make your way north through the forest. And then finally, after your weeks-long journey, the green spire rises in front of you. Ooh, there it gun, is. Gun, gun, gun. <laughs> wow. There it is. A grand tower of green rock covered in moss and ivy rising hundreds of feet above the forest canopy. The path leads directly to the front entrance, a pair of heavy, dark wooden doors that sit atop a half dozen steps. You notice the doors have no handles, only a single heavy iron knocker. There's no uh, no town or village built up around the spire? Nope. It is completely isolated. Wow. I'd like a perception check from everyone, too. I got a 7. I got a 15. I got a 20. Aslo... You spot a scrap of parchment hanging from a tree near the entrance a short distance off the path. Oh. Hmm. Hey, guys, look at this. I go over and check it out. Oh. It's carefully tucked up and wedged into some of the peeling bark a little bit. Hmm. So it's not nailed there or anything. Okay. On it, you find a written note. <coughs> T, comma. You're at the general store. Stop. I'm at the guardhouse. Stop. M. Oh. Uh, I'm confused. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I get it, though. I get it. Does Do I get to see the note? Yeah, I'll show you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also, I think I even recognize that handwriting. Really? You do indeed recognize the handwriting. I do? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So T is for Tokus, M is for Murney. Oh, okay. Tokus, you're at the general store. I'm at the guardhouse. Murney. I don't know what he means, though. This is confusing. Hmm...